So this is John chapter 11, the scripture for the 15th of December. Uh, John 11 is the second to last chapter in the first half of the Gospel of John, the so-called Book of Signs. Uh, we can see many of the patterns from the last 10 chapters cropping up here, springing up. Um, and, and this chapter also contains the crowning sign of the Book of Signs. So we see Jesus operating under a different set of assumptions from those as those who are around him, much like we do sort of in all of John. Uh, we see somewhat reluctant disciples and followers who aren't sure they want to go with Jesus where he's going. We see these ideas of light and darkness, of life and death, set in contrast, and there's not really any in-between ground. And we also see, toward the end, scheming religious leaders. John begins the chapter assuming that his readers or hearers are going to know about Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Uh, this is the first time they come up in the gospel, and they are clearly folks who need no introduction. I imagine that stories about Lazarus would have gotten out in the early church. Jesus' intentional delay at the beginning of this chapter both heartens and frustrates me. Uh, on the one hand, we see that God's timing is not ours, and, and that God's timing is perfect. But on the other hand, I've been with family and friends in the days after a death, and, and the pain that that death causes, it's hard for me to believe that Jesus would consciously and intentionally put Mary and Martha through this. Indeed, the first words out of each of the sisters' mouths are, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. These words weave together both deep faith and deep frustration. And in spite of Jesus answering Martha by saying, I am the resurrection and the life, this mixture of faith and frustration, this is something that tends to come out of every human's mouth in speaking with God. I think that that's what it means for God's ways and God's thoughts to be higher than our ways and our thoughts. That whenever we try and interact with God, there will be moments of deep faith and moments of deep frustration. Where we have to trust that God knows what he's doing. But <laughs> if we're going to be honest, we get frustrated that we don't know what God's doing. So Lazarus had been dead four days. And, and Jewish belief held, at least at this time, that the soul left the body and went to the afterlife, went to Sheol, after three days. So, having spent four days dead, there was no hope for Lazarus. Yet, the gospel is good news precisely because it takes our dead hopes and dreams and breathes new life back into them. God restores the lost, conquering even death for our sake. Now, how could anyone see this sign? Uh, of Jesus raising the dead and still fail to believe? Well, uh, John's answer to this involves the Pharisees fearing the power of Rome to destroy the temple, thereby destroying the nation of Israel. Gripped with this fear of destruction at the hand of Rome, Caiaphas, the chief priest at the time, saw an opportunity to use Jesus as a martyr, a scapegoat, really, on behalf of the nation. Now, Caiaphas did not know it at the time, but that was Jesus' purpose as well. However, Jesus intended this not just to be for the good of Israel. Jesus intended to die for all humanity, taking into himself the infection of sin and, and, and burying it along with death itself, somewhere where humanity would never fall under its curse again. So whether because of pure motives, as Jesus did, or because of impure motives, as Caiaphas did, um, both Jesus and Caiaphas are pursuing the events that would ultimately, ultimately lead to Jesus' death. So I wonder, how often do you bring both your faith and your frustration before God? That's all for John chapter 11. Tomorrow, the 16th, we'll look at John chapter 12. May God bless you in your reading of Scripture.